Did you see that? When you watch that back, as I go to put him on, he's sitting there dunk on my finger. This is the Venom Diaries, where we milk Australia's deadliest snakes for their venom to create anti-venom that saves over 300 lives every single year. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today, we are gonna be looking at how we sex snakes, all right? Sounds a bit unusual, but there's a couple of techniques involved. My big King Brown on display, I've got to milk him. He's just shed his skin. He's got a bit of shed stuck, so I'll grab Logan when I get him out. Um, we'll get a bit of that last of the shed off, milk him, um, and we'll actually look at how we sex the snakes there. I'll show you the tools involved. So they're called snake probes. And basically, these are it, all right? So they vary a fair bit in size. That's like probably the biggest snake probe you'll find. It's absolutely massive. That would be for like a really large python. And then all the way down here, you'd use these for like your juvenile snakes. I can probably even use that for an adult Eastern Brown, all right? This one's a bit more flexible. You can actually get ones that are slightly thinner. And they've got like a bald tip, so it's not sharp, because I don't want to spear the snake, because like I'll, sh I'll show you when I'm doing it, but I actually put this down the snake's tail on the inside. So basically what happens is, I'll just use this for example, if it goes in and it's only short like that, it's a female. But if I put it in, it goes like that, it's a boy. Okay, so snakes and lizards have got two penises, they're called hemipenes, and they run on the, so you're like, you've got this head up here, you go down the bottom body, sorry, and you get all the way to the cloaca or the vent, and then you've got the tail, right? Now the tail is where the hemipenes are held, so they sit underneath on the inside and they run like that, so yeah, you literally slide the probe in, but I'll show you very soon. To start off with, though, I've got to milk a couple of King Browns. I'm just a little bit short uh, on milking them this week, so I'm going to go and grab a couple of them right now to get into that. Then I'll grab the big fella from display, and then we will start probing. All right, so it is, it's cooled off. I'm almost 100% sure my female King Browns are females, but I'm just going to triple check. All right, I haven't probed them for a while. And the Eastern Brown I'm going to look at, I've never probed. It's a wild caught snake. Visually, it looks like a female. Um, but we will soon see, all right? So um, I'm gonna grab this snake hook and I'm going to grab this big King Brown here. He's got a bit of size on him now. So he's one of the larger ones in the program. Um, at the moment, it is smack bang in school holidays. So we've got lots going on. Um, we've got our winter wonderland theme holidays this holidays we've actually got snow down in the park area you can actually have snowballs and we got like these um big targets up on a wall which you, the kids are absolutely loving it hooking into the targets there got a massive jumping castle we've got shows all day elvis has been on absolute fire we've got keepers cruising around with oh look at that oh <laughs> There's a day ruiner right there. Look at that. Holy moly. And it's still going. There's still venom hanging off the fangs there. Wow. Are you going to let go for me? I feel like it's going to let go. This might be one of the very few. <gasps> Got him to let go. One of the very few King Browns that actually lets go voluntarily. Look at that, would ya? Isn't that wild? So that's like 350 milligrams. That'd probably kill everyone inside of the venom center right now. All right, there's a stack of people outside. Very toxic stuff, but we're going to use it to save human lives. Okay, good work, big fella. Get you back in here. Oh. Lovely. All right, I've got to do the one. Just I think it's this fella. Hello, mate. Oh, see that? He thought he was getting fed. I've, I've talked about it before, how the King Browns are really foodie. As soon as I lift his hide down, he bit his hide box. And now he's super alert. His tongue's going flat out. Oi. So he shed his skin last week, this fella. He's gonna get his venom taken today. And then he will get a nice big rodent tomorrow. 
right on the venom vial and Ooh. massive yield again. <laughs> A couple of fellas in the window over here. I'll go and show them what's going on. Check it out. <laughs> Alright, I've got to get this tail. It's got me hooked up in the legs here. And this guy's definitely not letting go. Hey. Life-saving stuff. Alrighty, so we're just grabbing our big King Brown out from display. Logan's gonna actually grab him because um, he is learning to wrangle King Browns at the moment. So he's just binned him. Has he got any shed stuck on him? No, not at the moment. Oh, he looks good. Yeah. So sometimes when the snakes are having trouble shedding, we give them a bit of a, a soak. This is just a bit of warm water and they get in and it just helps them remove that little bit of shed that is stuck on there. But because he, he shed yesterday and he had a little bit stuck on him, but oh no, it's, most of it's come off. Yeah, mad. Um, so we just try and triple check that it's not like around areas like their vent and so on, because you can get it built up in spots like that if it, if it gets stuck. But he looks actually really good. He's got a little bit on his neck there, but not much, and just a little bit on his back just here as well, um, which we'll grab off. So I'll let him have a little bit of a soak, and we're going to pull him out, and we're going to put him on the pinner. We're going to get his venom. Um, but I think there's an encounter coming in right now, so we'll run back down here. That is big, eh? <laughs> so yeah, that's a top end King Brown. And what I've got to do is I've got to get him on the pin and pad here, like this. And then the hardest part is right that, grabbing his head like so. And then um, you can see they're massive. So he's probably two meters at least, if not bigger, this fella. His venom glands are right there, all right? So they're absolutely massive. Now, what do you do if you see a snake in the bush? Go back slowly. Back away and tell a grown up. That's right. Don't do what I do. <laughs> all righty, so, whoop, we'll get him to bite here. And have a go at that. <laughs> That'd ruin your day, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. You can come in nice and close if you want, have a good look. Oh, I've got his head, he won't get you. You can see his fangs. Yeah. <laughs> pretty wild, eh? I'll just grab his tail because he's wrapping around my leg. The problem with the King Browns is they don't let go. See, he's just chewing. So that's typical for a black snake. They just hold and, um, and just chew away. Because they're not as toxic, like these guys are number 18 on all this, but what they lack in toxicity, they make them for and yield. Yeah. Did you see that? When you watch that back, as I go to put him on, he's sitting like a dunk on my finger. I don't know if you've seen that then, when I was doing that milking for the encounter. Oh, too close, Bilbo. So, when I went to put that snake on the vault, we'll slow it down and show you what just happened. And, and look, close calls happen here, it's, it's, it's part of the game. Um, so I had the snake by the head, the King Brown, and I went to put it on the venom vial. But as I was pulling the snake out of the enclosure, he, he bumped the water bowl and put his head into the water. And so his face was wet, but I didn't really notice it being that wet, if that makes sense. Anyway, I've gone to put him on the venom vial and he slipped. He just literally missed the lip and went dunk straight into my finger. And I re reacted really quick. And so... I didn't wear a bite, thankfully, or not even a scratch, no fang, no tooth went into me. But we'll slow it down and you'll see how quick things can go wrong. Um, and I'm just extremely lucky that I'm constantly so focused and you'll see how fast I move and get it. Because if it all would take is him to catch one tooth then, his top jaw or his bottom jaw, and that would have been it. He would have just had my finger. And a bite from a snake that size, he would have just grabbed my finger and chewed. You would have seen the venom vials before where they're just chilling like this. I'd probably end up losing my finger from um, necrosis, if not worse. So whew. <laughs> we haven't really got, um, you know, a, we've, we've had close calls on camera here with you guys with the brown snakes flying up at me and stuff, but I haven't had a snake touch me in a, years, like literally years. I haven't had a snake bump me. So 
But it's taken a, a minute or two to um, just process what just happened. And because um, I've still got a few snakes to do. Um, so, you know, like at the end of the day, if I really want, I can just sort of close up for the day, literally, and go and do something else and come back to this tomorrow. But um, I do feel all right. And, you know, obviously I didn't get bitten. I was really calm. You know, I'm not shaking or nothing. Um, I didn't even skip my heart or anything like that. I just was more annoyed at myself for not picking up that, hey, he just stuck his head in the water bowl and he slipped. Um, so that was my mistake. Um, and I wear that 100%. So, but thankfully, no nibble, no trip to hospital. All right, so we're gonna keep going. All right, so I actually just got Logan to move that King Brown into this bin out of the soak. Um, Cause as you would have just seen, that other snake, he was really wet. And this guy's a little bit wet as well. So I've just put a bit of spray on the pin and pad um, and I'm gonna get him on there. Um, if he's too slippery, I just won't do this, but we'll see how we go here. All right, so got a bit of a crowd here gathering. Nice big snake. But yeah, what I did then with that last one is it literally slipped forward like that. So I'll just get this guy, just got to get his lip line there, like that. And then Bushka, have a go at that. So yeah, this is that big display king ground. Big mob of people here having a geezer, and that is a that's probably four, because this is a big vial. This is much larger than those other ones I was using. That's probably every bit of 400 milligrams right there. So that is absolutely hectic. Um, and I'm just gonna triple check he hasn't got any skin stuck on him, because that's what I was worried about, because it took him two days to sort of shed this fella. Um, but he looks fantastic. He's got a tiny amount right there, which I just got off. And um, that's him, done. So he's ready to go back to the display. This is the guy that normally holds on for the longest. Like, he, this is the guy that we, this is the first snake we milked for Venom Diaries. This guy right here, and he held on for so long. But anyway, we'll go and get him back in, and then we're gonna start probing some snakes. And we'll show you how we sex them, all right? So follow me. Logan's kicking around here somewhere. All right, mate. Good man. Still can't believe that close call, eh? All right, so. Just gonna put a bit more spray on the pad. So I might do, hey Logan, you good to go? Yeah. So what's gonna happen is I'll restrain the kingy and I'll hover by the head and you're going to hold the tail sort of upside down like this towards me. And I'll have one hand like this and I'll sort of pin it there and I'm just going to probe it, right? Um, so, so just like for you guys at home, if you have a look on the card here, so this, it, it's technically, it should be a female. So if it was a female, it'd say 1.0.0. If it's a female, it says 0.1.0. If it, we don't know it's sex, it'll say 0.0.1. All right, um, but I'm pretty sure, I can't remember it was myself that probed this snake or, or someone else. Um, so I'm just gonna triple check, same as her, um, and this girl here, and I'll just show you the process, all right? Generally with these kingies, the girls have got a really small little pinhead, so you can see her straight away. It's absolutely tiny compared to the boys. So there is like a little bit of sexual dimorphism amongst them. Um, but if it was a really young snake, you wouldn't really have that size difference yet. Um, so, but she's about six years old now, so um, should be well across it. Alrighty, so right, here's a bigger probe here. Yeah, so spin that. So hold that upside down like that, and keep your thumb there and i'm going to put my hand here and i'm literally yes that's only going in so that is not even two full scales there 
All right, so that's a definite female. If that was a boy, it would have gone doop, all the way up, probably at least four or five scales, um, but quite short. So we'll do the next one. So the whole point, what I'm doing here at the moment is I'm cooling them. You'll notice their temps are much cooler than the others. Because the King Browns, I try and breed them every couple of years just to keep our numbers following up. This isn't a species we collect very often. Only very rarely will we do it. Um, just from specific localities. All right. Again with this one, nice big snake, but tiny little pinhead. Um, I might actually left hand this one. Yep, beauty. Yep, so upside down, like have your thumb where mine is. The right on there. Yep. So there. Again, short as. It's only going in that far. So, girl. Okay. I might. I might do this brown snake. I'm very confident on her. So just let me completely grab this snake before you come in because it's pretty wild. The brown snakes, generally the real big ones, I can see quite a thick bulges in the tail where the hemipenes would be. Um, this one's smaller. So like the female Eastern Browns are, are small snakes. They're not overly big. Oi. Yeah, looking at me. Hey. So I'm gonna left hand her as well, Logan. Good. Yep. So I'll use that thin one. Yep, so point it that way towards you. Pull the tail through that. Yep, roll it. Keep it nice and solid. Yep. Short, I'm going to check both sides, but just um, move your hand back a little bit if you can. Yeah, that's only going in two scales. So I'm very confident that, that is a girl. And that's what I want. It's hard to get that right hand side, but the left hand side's going in fine. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how we do it. It's, it's much easier on the pythons because I, I don't have to really restrain them, I just sort of do it easy. Um, Logan's never probed a snake before, so this is a bit of a learning curve for him, just watching me do it. Ideally, I'd have someone else here holding the snake by the head whilst I did it, um, but yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna pair her with a handsome man, and she's a good looking girl too, really colorful. But yeah, I'll pair her with a handsome man in, um, in September. And hopefully, we get ourselves some baby brown snakes. All right. Oh, yeah. All righty. So, that is going to be it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Sexing snakes, getting ready for breeding. So, you know the drill. Like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you guys for the next episode.